Oak City Council called by the mayor. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, we have two items on the agenda. We are going to be on Zoom. We're on live uh, cable TV access channel. We're being recorded. We're being streamed. And because we have some members online and some members not online, the chair will entertain a motion to take a roll call vote that the purpose of the meeting would be applicable to all motions to remove from table, item place on table items, open a public hearing package items, or suspend the rules unless there is an objection. Is there any objections? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. So moved. Day of hybrid's gonna be over soon, right? Sure is. <laughs> some, some of us. Uh, I don't I don't believe our we, we don't have a clerk, right? We don't. Okay, roll call. You're the clerk. Mm -hmm. I'm the clerk. Right. Anderson Burgos. Here. Bartley. Yes. Here. Givner. Yes. Jordan. Here. Maldonado Velez. Here. McGee. Here. McGibbon. Here. here. Murphy Rambaletti. Here. Wawo. Here. Israel Rivera. Here. Jenny Rivera. Here. Tallman. Here. Bacon. Here. We are unanimous. All rise, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag. The flag of the United, United States, States of America and, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless America. And the city of Holyoke. And the city council. City council. Uh, Mr. President, we do have a full compliment to the Holyoke City Council. Would you wish to go to item number one? Say go to item one, take it off the table. Okay. Second. A motion made a second we uh, receive and take off the table item number one, which is a report from the Committee on Finance, to whom it's referred in order that the Hoyoke City Council subsidize the revenue of the sewer budget from the tax levy for in fiscal 2024 for $1,039,680. Second. Uh, the remainder fund uh, in remaining remained I'm sorry remainder funded by sewer receipts uh, this report out of committee recommended be adopted by Councilor McGivern Councilor Councilor Jordan signed the committee report Councilor Pello uh, Councilor Tallman and Councilor Anderson Burgos do you wish to sign the report please please thank you okay um, motion is made second to pass the first reading a quick committee report we met uh, we, we <coughs> excuse me we met Last Some night. Time. <laughs> last, last night. Last week. Last night. Yeah. And we did. Uh, we did have the uh, the auditor uh, in before us, and we had a very frank discussion about this. Um, I think most of us know the situation of what's going on with the wastewater treatment plant being an enterprise fund. Uh, DLS and the outside auditor and our auditor has identified this as a needed subsidy for revenue to support the uh, enterprise budget. Uh, itself for fiscal 2024. Uh, Tanya did tell us that if we fail to uh, vote on the subsidy, DOS is going to probably take action, which would include not allowing our tax rate to be uh, to go forward if we do vote on a tax uh, any tax classification tonight. Um, with that in mind, is there any discussion or any questions, Councilor Jordan? Yep. <clears throat> Uh, I am in favor of this, and I'm glad that we will support this, um, and it's the right thing to do. I did want to just point out a few different things because, again, and I see it in the mayor's letter, and by the way, there's a number of points that the mayor makes that are, are correct, um, but they continue to feed this narrative that the sewer fund is radically underfunded and that somehow the taxpayers are subsidizing the ratepayers. And I want to again go through some facts because mathematical facts matter. And I want to explain why that is again not true. First point is one of the things that we finally got to the bottom of was the issue about street sweeping which we think we all agree has nothing whatsoever to do with sewer operations. For a long time, approximately $600,000 of annual expenses have been put into the sewer fund, which are artificially causing the fund to be in a deficit. Therefore, if those funds were put in the DPW budget, where they should have been and not in the sewer fund, this million dollar appropriation that is needed this year would be $600,000 less. 
Okay, so that's point number one. We need to be understanding this. They took a DPW expense and put it in the sewer fund. So imagine now, if you will, 10 years of that. Now, this has been going on for more than 10 years, but if you took just 10 years of that, that means six million extra dollars would have been in the sewer fund. When you take the cumulative effect of the subsidies from the taxes into the sewer fund, there was a $1 million appropriation a couple of years ago, and now you have this. As far as I see it, the ratepayers are subsidizing the taxpayers just on this line item alone by at least $4 million. Okay, so that's point number one. So whenever you hear this story about, oh, it's short and it's because, you know, we need to jack up the rates all this more. No, they actually took city aside expenses and buried it here. And so what is the impact of that? The impact of that is to do a backdoor tax override on the residents that never should have been done. Point number two, the other reason this is short is because they're not collecting the money. 90% of the people are paying. 10% of the people are not paying. Well, that was over $700,000 a year, okay? If they had the same collection rate that the tax collector has, which is 97%, this is 90, that's another half a million dollars a year. Every year, year after year, that doesn't get collected. And the solution, instead of collecting it, is we want the 90% to pay an extra 10% to make up for the 10% that don't pay their bills. Now, who thinks that's a good idea? I don't. So anyways, this is the other reason that it's short. So now, what's 600,000 plus 500,000? That's 1.1 million. That's more than just this transfer that we're putting in this year. Then you've had all these other one-time expenses, consultants and lawyers, to do the once every 20 year review of the contract. That's not, those are one-time expenses. The other thing that's going on is, we're also coming to learn that years ago, they buried a number of capital expenses from the original privatization into this bill. Number two, they had a one-time fix of $750,000. That is not a reoccurring expense. It's a one-time set of fixes. So that number, when they're doing the budget estimate, does not need to be anywhere near that size. Now, the other point that I wanted to make is there's a lot of other capital expenses, street-level repairs like culverts, MS4 expenses. A lot of these things have nothing whatsoever to do with sewer operations. Those need to be pulled out. So we're just scratching the surface of what's getting buried in here. So whenever you hear this narrative about the city subsidy of the sewer fund, sounds great, not true. And I wanna debunk that myth. And I debunked it weeks and weeks and weeks ago, and I'm debunking it again, and I've yet to hear an argument that debunks me, okay? I'm still waiting. So uh, welcome to have that argument uh, with whomever or discussion that says what I'm saying is not true. But they know the numbers are true because there they are. And so anyways, as we go forward, eventually, all things held equal, we probably will at some point need a sewer increase in a, perhaps a year or two because when we start taking on some of this new bonding, there might be a need potentially for some increase, but not in this particular year. So, and oh, by the way, the other thing that I didn't want to get into too, too much, but I will point it out. This number that we're voting on now is based on what their estimate is of the budget for FY24. Well, as you all know, we're only halfway through the year. So we haven't even closed the books on last year, so we don't even definitively know what we have for free cash in the sewer fund for FY23, let alone their crystal ball being accurate for what's the, gonna happen over the next six months. This is all an estimate, it's fuzzy math. But nevertheless, this is what they put in the budget as placeholders. Therefore, we have to have revenue, DOR, says you put that number, you gotta back that number up with the dollars to support it. And based on what is there, we have to put, uh, we have to uh, fund this in order to balance the budget because, but I would encourage in future years 
that some of these expenses begin to be pulled out of the sewer fund and put in the proper departments they belong. But that's for next budget cycle. So anyways, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Councilor. Debunked, huh? I gotta write that one down, Councilor Bartley. I like that. <laughs> Councilor, I'll help you. Thank you. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? Council Councilor Vagan. I'll be brief. I just want to note that at finance meeting last night, I made in a briefer form without as much detail the points that Councilor Jourdain has made tonight. And I am pleased that we were at least finally able to get a solid number relative to the street sweeping, which we had been seeking for months, um, so that it gave us something concrete to be able to discuss relative to the sewer fund. And so I echo his other comments relative to collections as well. So thank you. Hey, Mr. President. Yeah, uh, and I just, Barley, sorry. I, I just want to uh, jump on if I could for a second, because the only reason we even have 90% collections is because this city council, and I know people can't stand hearing this, but this city council passed an ordinance mm -hmm. to put pressure on homeowners, commercial, te uh, uh, commercial owners, to pay their bill. If they don't pay their sewer bill, they're going to get their water shut off. That was somewhat controversial, and it took us a couple of years to do it, but ultimately it passed, Mr. President. Now, I've been hearing from some of our newer counselors, oh, what's $20 here and there, $40 here? It, it's, it's, it's such, it's such, a, um, it's such a, a, a frustrating part of, of sitting over here where I have, with the knowledge that I have in terms of my the historical perspective, which doesn't go back to 40 years. but. If, if councilors want to have willful ignorance going forward, that does not help the city, which is why I happen to mention once in a while some of what I feel are the good things that this city council did in the past years just in the term that I've been here. So it's only been 12 years for me, big deal, but that was something we got done, and it was, believe me, it was by no chance a unanimous vote, but we got it done, and that's why we're even at 90%, thank goodness. But... To, and then one thing that my friend didn't mention that that w just came in was a, a commercial commercial payment, which but for Councilor Jordan asking about it, uh, <laughs> a commercial uh, sewer uh, bill came in for three hundred forty-five thousand dollars within the last month. Well, if 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 Councilor Jordan doesn't ask that, we're not even informed, and that clearly offsets what's what's due, but. Go ahead, raise the rate, do what you have to do all the time, and you know, just, just dump it on the, dump on the rate payers. But I'll tell you what, uh, Mr. President, the, in terms of uh, willful, willful ignorance, most of us are coming back next year. There's two new counselors, two brand new counselors, and I know they both been here to multiple meetings, so I'm very excited about their perspective coming, for, coming forward. They're not gonna walk in here as if there's uh, 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 no history behind them. They're, they're coming here listening, paying, atten paying attention. I wish I could have said that for the counselor that came in last term. Thank you. Thank you, counselor. Um, just, <clears throat> just want to. If I may. Guys, come on. Honestly. If I may, Mr. President. Counselor. Hang on a second, Izzy. Counselors, please. Please don't address call me dear. Thank you very much. Would everybody address the chair? You need to stop. Um, Counselor Israel Rivera. Thank you. Uh, I must be one of these uh, uninformed or ignorant counselors. But um, I just want to say I've only been on the council for two years. And to be honest, a lot of the things we've been facing are based on things that have been going on for longer than two years. The reality of what it is, is that it is, it, although we are at 90% collection with regards to the water rate thing, I know I have a variety of constituents that have called me over the last year or so where their water has been cut off and they paid their bills to no fault of their own. 
So how are we serving these constituents that are actually paying their bills on time, but their water still gets cut off because of something we did, right, in a sense? But nobody talks about that part. Nobody wants to talk about the part of the impact that it has on the poor people, the people that actually pay their rent but can't pay directly to the sewage because they don't own the actual property. We're not talking about that, right? We're talking about the 9% we collected off the backs off of the poor people that are trying to do what they need to do. What we need to do is actually get to a point where we're doing things preventative, not reactionary. We constantly continue to do things reactionary. The, the, the issue with the sewer, this has been going on for almost a decade, probably even more. It's now that it's being unraveled, not because of counselors, but because we have a mayor that's working in collaboration with the counselors to make sure that this is happening, right? The stuff that CSO stuff is coming and it's bottlenecking. This is not today or yesterday. This is 20, 30 years worth of stuff. Stop trying to control a narrative by deflecting and degrading things that actually have been happening for decades in this community. We are in receivership, it's decades. We are almost on the brink of receivership as a city. This is for decades, not two years, and not ignorant counselors that just came on. There's more responsibility to be shared with everyone. Now here, I hear you. I don't wanna add more, more to the taxpayer, but in reality, we're in a situation that regardless, it's gonna be more that's added to the taxpayer. That's just the reality of what it is. Some people want to talk like they want to save and do all this other stuff, but want to request more trash barrels, which will cost us more money and cost the taxpayers more money. I swear to God, make it make sense. It does not make sense that on the one hand, you're talking about saying leave the taxes low, but on the next hand, you're saying let's give them extra barrels that will cause our taxes to go up because we have to pay more for trash. This is the part where on one time you guys are conflicting with each other, that doesn't make sense, especially when it comes from counselors that, have, that are seasoned. You've been here for years, you even have family members that were, that were people in positions of power. What, what, I don't, make it make sense. That's all I ask, is make it make sense. Thank you. Oh. Councilor Gibner. Thank you, Mr. Councilor President. Um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that um, we just appropriated 100 grand for a study of this that will be completed in May 2024. So um, we are working on it. It's coming up. Um, the willful, willful ignorance, that comment, I think is a little inappropriate. In fact, I think it's a lot inappropriate. And short of repeating many points made by Councillor Rivera, like, this is the 18th year of a 20 year contract. So if you're telling me that it's the last two years of counselor's fault that we're in this position, that's just not true in any way. Um, we need to move forward. We need to stop kicking the can down the road. We need to figure out who's paying what with a comprehensive study that we've already funded that's almost done. We've waited 18 years. We can wait till May. So I think we're good. Um, and I think we need to have more, you know, constructive conversations about what's going on here because the blame game isn't cutting it because the blame game has been like the long game and we're really trying to work together to figure out how to solve problems here. So I just appreciate everybody taking a moment to breathe and hopefully being able to continue to share their um, opinions and their numbers with the rest of us so that we can make good decisions for our community. Thank you. I guess now would be a great time, which I should have done at the beginning of the meeting, to recognize one of our newly elected counselors joined us in the chambers. Councilor Megan uh, McGrath-Smith is with us. Um, well, well, welcome. Working hard on what will be responsibilities next year. And this is a very important evening for the City Council. I'd just like to make, to make a mental note to the mayor, Thursday night meetings don't work. But that's okay. Any other speakers, Mr. We President? have two items that we have to do here. I'm gonna first, we have a motion to pass the first reading. Yep, on the uh, motion. At the moment, is no one else. On the motion. On motion. the motion to pass motion. the first reading. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Pass the second reading. Motion, motion to pass the second. Second, that this, uh, that this appropriation, this subsidy for the sewer fund, 
pass the second reason, second reading. If there's no further discussion, the clerk will, clerk will call the roll. If you vote yes, you're voting in favor. If you vote no, you're voting against it. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> Keep forgetting. <clears throat> Councilor Gibner. Yes. Councilor Jordan. Yes. Councilor Maldonado Velez. Yes. Councilor McGee. Yes. Councilor McGivern. Yes. Councilor Murphy Rabaletti. Yes. Councilor Puello. Yes. Councilor Israel Rivera. Yes. Councilor Jenny Rivera. Yes. Councilor Tallman. Yes. Councilor Vacant. Yes. Councilor Bartley. Did you skip somebody? Yeah. Anderson Burgos. I'm sorry. My thumb was right there. Sorry, Juan. Councilor Anderson Burgos. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Councilor Bartley. I'm just one yes. Unanimous. So stupid. Seriously, you're so dumb. Uh, are we talking to Coco? Are one? Let's get along. talking to his bird. He could be looking in the mirror. Right, come on, people. We Let's just, get along. You know, we got <laughs> Let's act like adults, <laughs> please. <laughs> First of all, Can we please act like adults, was, everyone? Honestly. I was talking to my cat. This is embarrassing. Since, since Councilor Bartley wants to talk junk, listen. You need one, to stop. One, get stop. stop. Go get help. One. You need help. All right, everybody, now <laughs> we're going to address the chair and we're going to do it one at a time. Thank you. Uh, by your vote, you have balanced the budget. The tax levy is now set at $63,073,552. We have a tax rate of, a single tax rate of $23.79. Anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Or does anybody want to go to item number two? Like item, number two. item number two. Item number two. Motion made and second, we go to item number two. Item number two, off the table. Introduced by Councilor McGee and McGivern that the City Council vote to set an MRF for fiscal 24, otherwise known as tax classification. Tax classification allows communities in Massachusetts to shift a single tax rate from uh, commercial, from residential to commercial, vice versa which also includes uh, commercial, industrial property, and personal property. Uh, the shift is a majority vote of the City Council. Uh, the way we do this is on, the, on your tables in the, uh, in the chambers, you have the options that were presented to us uh, by the Treasurer for the levy, which I just, let, <clears throat> just read. We also have, <clears throat> um, for those who are at home, uh, an email sent by our administrative assistant yesterday, so each of you should have the same uh, the same document to uh, to be able to follow around around along, sorry, or to be able to uh, uh, to have any questions to uh, certainly uh, jump in. Um, the way we do it is we will take three. And this is a parliamentary procedure. We will take three votes. It will take three amendments. A vote, and if there are three amendments, a vote. In I would ask everybody to use. Um, what do we usually use? The, the uh, we shift. use CP, CIP. We use the shift, shift on the left. Okay. The Our actual vote is on the MRF factor, but for purposes of making a vote this evening, please use the first column, CIP shift. You'll see the corresponding tax rates accordingly to whatever sh uh, shift is, mm. is uh, proposed. Once there's three amendments, we will take votes going with the last amendment first, working backwards until we vote on all three. If all three fails, we can then go to three more possible or the same, the repeated uh, motions to, uh, to set a uh, minimum residential factor. Um, any questions? I know it's a little confusing, but. Nope. Okay, is there any motions? Mr. President. Councilor Tom. I'd like to, uh, do a shift of 1.6970, which would be 1891 for residents and 4037 for commercial. There a second to that. Motion fails for lack of a second. Mr. President? Oh. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Councilor Gibner. Councilor Gibner. President, I'd like to motion for a shift of uh, 1.679. Second. 
Most, is there a second to that motion? Second. Motion, motion been made and seconded to use a, a SIP uh, factor 1.6790. Residential rate would be $19.04. Commercial rate would be $39.95. That's the first first motion. Is there any other motions, any amendments? I have one. Councilor, Councilor Jardine. Thank you. I'd like to do 1.70, which was this year's shift. Second. Which would be 1889 residential and 4045 commercial. Motion has been made and seconded, CIP of 1.7000, resulting in residential 1889, commercial industrial personal property, $40.45. Mr. President? Councillor Bartley. I'd like to make offer a shift of 1.6990. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded to use 1.6990 resulting in residential $18.90, commercial industrial personal property $40.42. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Bartley, okay. Bartley and Vacant. I heard it, I didn't put a face on it, but it's Councilor Vacant. Okay, now we have three, three votes. We're gonna go by the 16999 first. However, discussion is open. Is there any discussion? I always feel like I'm going first here, but if nobody else is going to raise their hand, I'll say a few things. Councillor Jordan. Anybody else want to go? I don't want to. All right. Some people at the other night were all, might feel I speak too much. I don't know. Um, just we don't have enough people signing up to speak, so I don't know. Um, we got to say something, huh? This is a pretty important thing. Um, so anyways, uh, I have a few opinions. So I want to just mostly share information, colleagues, and that is that um, one, no matter what we do, uh, as a general rule, um, we're going to be, for most of the rates, going up on both. Um, at least I think that's what's going to ha end up happening here, unless perhaps the one that wants to shift all of it to the homeowners and, and take it all off of the business. Um, I propose the 1.7, 1.699, it's like two cents either way. I could support either one of those. But basically, the logic behind that is th when you look at the overall valuations, they basically went up the same. Pretty much um, the commercial and the residential this year. The problem that we have as a community, I'll, I'll try and say the, the good with the bad here as much as I can, is that when we look at the competitiveness of the city, and this was alluded to by the mayor, um, I agree with his point that it would be nice to be under forty dollars on the resi on the commercial, but it would also be nice to be under nineteen dollars for the residential too. Um, that because when I read to you what the residential rates of all of our neighboring communities, we're just wildly higher on residential. For example, Springfield, 1606. Chickabee, 1476. We're, we're at 1889. Westfield, 1597. Agawam, 1454. Northampton, 1519. West Springfield, 1481. I mean, you start going out to the Boston area, the values are higher, but their rates go down to like $9 and $10. All of our neighbors have rates, residential rates, like 25%, 30% less than us. And it's same on the commercial side. Not to that, well, almost to that extent. You've got rates 35, 31, 31, 27. Northampton uses a single rate of only 15, 30 in West Springfield. I mean, our rates are radically higher, and yet our levy is massively less than most of our neighbors. Just in our surrounding circle, we have the seventh highest levy. Who, who would have imagined that Agawam has a levy of $73 million, and we, only, and we have a levy of $63 million? That, 
the small little Agawam is able to generate that amount of tax revenue on, on, on what they have there. Northampton, 76 million. Uh, Westfield, 87 million. Chicopee, 101 million. Of course, we know what the impact of this is on their departments. A lot of them are spending way less on a number of key departments than we are. So they have a lot more money to put into savings, a lot more money to put into infrastructure in their towns. We're like really struggling to even pay 63 million. So you can see the kind of capacity they have. Here's the other bad note for this year for us. Because we're so behind and we don't have our free cash certified, all these communities are putting money, millions of dollars on their tax levies to keep taxes down. You don't even have that as an option. Like for example, one thing I, I, I do take exception to in the mayor's thing, he goes, Gee, almost like, isn't it great that you know we didn't take and put any money on the tax rate um, from our stabilization or our free cash? Because we don't have free cash. Nothing certified yet. That's part of that whole you know balancing the books problem we have to get going. This year, we as counselors, we, we don't, and I'm not sure how much we really could have put on the levy because we're so financially strapped, especially when we know what the ARPA situation ending this year. So as we look at the rates, I think in all of this, we've got a real tough deck of cards we're dealt here, right? We want to help everyone. In reality is, I think we have to kind of split the baby, in my opinion, like we had to do last year. I don't think it's fair to the residents to take it and put it all on the homeowners and nothing on the commercial. And vice versa, I don't support keeping the residential rate the same and putting it all on commercial. We kind of meet that balance of in the middle, and I think that's a balanced approach. Um, the other thing is, I can't really get behind this argument about the $40 thing when are you really that if you're 39, 90, whatever, and or you're forty dollars and forty-five cents, does that really make a difference in terms if that's like what you're thinking about when all your neighboring competitors are 35, 31, 31, 27, 15, 19? I mean, the point is that if that's the issue, like that extra forty. 50 cents, <coughs> you're out of the ball game because you're like eight, nine, ten dollars over anyways. Like no one is, that 40 cents isn't gonna make a difference to say like, oh, if we keep it below 40, it's gonna totally change our image. And you know, things are gonna, we'll get this other, because I've listened to that argument year over year. And meanwhile, I've watched the Hoyoke Mall, which is what, by the way, is just blowing us up. I mean, we don't talk about that nearly enough. We lost $4 million. When your levy is only $60 million, that's 15% of your total budget went down when they got cut in half from $8 million to $4 million. And who paid for all that? 80% was paid by the residential sector. So they're already picking up 80% of the $4 million decrease. Because the bill didn't go down, it's who's paying went down. So, you know, the, the commercial sector has received a tremendous break, at least in the instance of that main taxpayer. But I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I wish we could have rates radically less on commercial um, in line with what our neighbors have. We're just not in that position to do that. Meanwhile, our residential rate is way uncompetitive compared to everybody else. And the problem that concerns me, and I'm sure it concerns you, is the fact that with the exception of Springfield, who has a common demographic to us, every one of these communities is either in the case of Chicopee, somewhat more affluent, and the rest of these are wildly more affluent. And yet, rate-wise, they pay much less. And those bills get passed on to tenants. So I think we should take, it's a, tough deck of cards, I think we should sort of 
take a down the road approach, a middle of the road approach on the taxes this year. I would encourage that. Um, but that's still going to result in residential going up a few, a couple of hundred dollars. I think I figured it out at this would be around $215 increase. That's a lot. And but to start going even more and more when the values have gone up so much, think about it. That's not what the other towns are doing. They're, they're, as the values are going up, they're lowering the rate to offset it. We're not doing that. We would be in a situation going up on the values and up on the rates. That's really unheard of. And by the way, I wanted to point out to you, interesting fact, I went and looked at all the different towns about what's going on, because obviously, right, the values as a general rule are going up. I only found Boston for cities in Massachusetts where values are going up and rates are going up. So it's going to be like us in Boston. Everybody else, values up, rates down. That's not happening in Holyoke. So something, you know, we've got some struggles here. Uh, interested to hear what the, everybody else has to say about it, but I, I encourage a down-the-middle approach this year. Thank you. Councilor Israel Rivera. I think Councilor Givener had her hand up first, but if not, <clears throat> then I'll go. All right, all right, so I'm going to go. So uh, I think for me, I'm going to preface what I'm going to say by saying that I'm going to to, 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 to the residents that I, I'm a, a constituent that I'm just going to tell you straight up like there's no smoke and mirrors here and for me with regards to where we're at as a community and some of the things that have been referenced it's not a fair comparison and, and, and to, to, to kind of like spin it in a way where rates rates are higher in our community right but we are facing a lot more issues than a lot of the communities uh, mentioned, right, at the same time. And also, I would say that the values of the homes in, the, in those communities referenced are way higher than the values that we have here. So the rate that is set kind of meets the, 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 the needs that they need in their community based on the fact that the value of their homes are significantly higher, making it easier for them to keep their rates down, right? For us, it's not the same story, right? And because it's not the same story, it's, it's kind of not, not fair to hold the city accountable or behind with, with regards to this type of comparison. So for us to compare ourselves, the closest thing we could possibly do uh, is in comparison would possibly be someone like a community like Springfield, but even them, it's not the same because they're way bigger than we are. And they have MGM, they have a variety of larger businesses that we don't have. Right. So for us, we got to look at what we do have and where we actually are so that we can try to move forward from this position and try to plan how we can move forward for the future. Maintaining the status quo will only keep us where we're at. We have to be innovative. We have to create new, new things. We have to try things different to try to get to where we're at. I'm not saying to raise the residential rate crazy or extreme. Because I'm going to be honest, I pay taxes too. I live in this community. I have two babies. I'm in here for the long term. It's going to hurt me too. So it's not that I don't, it, that that's what it is, right? The reality of what it is, although 40 and 396 or 399 or 3, 368 or whatever, it's not much of a difference. It's pennies, but it's a goal that we're striving towards. And that's what we need to do, set benchmarks and strive towards those benchmarks so that businesses can see that we are really doing what we are saying that we're doing. That's where it's at for me in, in the vote that I take tonight, right? It's not about whether or not I'm, I, I'm, I'm playing a political game or trying to uh, offset certain things. It's more about how we can think proactively and think about the future so that, I mean, for me, my two-year-old and four-year-old have a better holio to grow up in, right? So if this is what it is, then this is the steps I got to take. Thank you. Councilor Gibner. Thank you, Mr. President Chair. <laughs> um, I couldn't get my mute button quick enough, so sorry about that. Um, I just wanted to just mention that, you know, I don't have to repeat things, but we're not our neighbors, so I don't, I never think it's a really fair comparison. Um, and 
the people who move um I don't think people always like I don't see a lot of people moving for tax rates people are looking for homes they're looking for communities they're looking for something specific appealing but businesses move for tax rates so when I think of this I think of how we can get more businesses here to create to generate more revenue and, and that's why I will support the um, 1.679 but I just feel like it's important to say you know those are the ones those are the big moves that bring uh, income into the city and I think we do need to take it seriously that malls are going out of business you know they're pretty much dying and it seems like things are moving back downtown and I would love to see that um, the mall is still there with activities it seems like more and more activities and that's great but as been mentioned we're losing revenue from the mall we're losing tax revenue that we really need so we have to figure out ways to make up for it and I think that by attracting more businesses we can help make up for it. And it, it's just a matter of time, you know, hopefully not too much time, but you know, when companies come into the city, their income starts to drive the, the homeowner's tax or the citizen's tax rate down again. And I think that's what we need to encourage. So I just, um, yeah, I hope we're all thinking about that. And I know we all are wanting the best. So thank you. Councilor Bacon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I would like to add to this discussion by this point. A majority of the council this year tried to give an opportunity to the citizens to vote on the matter of a tax decrease, which would have lowered the business tax rate below $40. That was blocked by the mayor. And most of the people arguing for a lower business rate tonight also voted against the ability for a ballot question to go on for the citizens to vote on a tax surcharge. So I find it a little ironic that the same people are arguing now for a lower business rate when there could have been the opportunity for the citizens to make their voices known relative to a tax matter. And I hope given the actions that were taken and the judgment found in the court and that it was stipulated by the mayor that the question would go on the ballot next year, that the new council will keep the word of the mayor and the vote of the current council in the new year. <clears throat> and then it will be the citizens that will decide relative to that particular tax rate, which I think is the right of any citizens to be able to have a voice in their taxes. Thank you. Mr. President. Councilor Barley. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do a, a very brief translation. Uh, the two prior speakers prior to the Ward 5 Councilor, basically what they said is they're gonna raise the tax rate on residential and lower the tax rate on commercial. That summarizes it. L let me just give you a different perspective. We're gonna, there's gonna be a vote tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, Mr. President, the ZBA is going to meet at 5 p.m. on a Friday. How about that? That's a normal time. And they're going to take a vote on whether or not we're going to allow an investment on 115 Whiting Farms Road. It's already been denied at the, at the local level. This is commercial property. A party wants to come in, have a commercial, uh, in, increase a commercial space on 115 Whiting Farms. Already, are, like I said, already denied by, uh, by an inspector in the building commission. Now they have to appeal to the Zoning, zoning Board of Appeals. Meeting tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Going to put in at least a million dollars worth of investment into a commercial building, which would do what? Expand the tax base. You don't expand it on residential. The residential already has 77% of the tax base in the city. What the two speakers prior to the Ward 5 Council said, so what? You know, let's keep raising the taxes on the residents. That's what they said. You know, ne never mind all the jargon, all the rest of they said about their kids and all that. They said, we want to raise the taxes on the residents. I hope people are hearing that because that's what they said. What I'm saying, Mr. President, is let's keep a balanced approach. The $40 deal has not, mid has not affected anything. We've had plenty of people, commercial people, coming in and expanding the cannabis here in Holyoke. That hasn't died down. They're still investing. So this, it's, it's a canard, it's, it's a red herring, this whole $40 thing. I would say the residential 
has the vast majority of the property taxes. They're still going to get hit. I'm still going to get hit. But we can mitigate it to the extent we can. That's why there's a tax shift. I'm hopeful that one of the first two will, will go. Um, I'm strongly doubtful that the third one will go, but that is an amazingly uh, massive tax break for commercial and really hammers the residential. So I would strongly urge us to vote for either the first or second one, and then let's go home. Thank you. On the motion. Councilor Maldonado Velez. Thank you, Chair President McGiver. And I honestly, I'm, I'm also, I'll leave my comments for Tuesday when I'm in person. Thank you. Councilor Gibner. Sorry, I'm all set too. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Jardine. Yeah, just a couple added points. Um, one, obviously, this whole conversation starts with the budget. We have a lot of work to do in that regard. I, I continue to maintain that we will not snap out of this. I mean, of course, we already know that we're, we're living off ARPA money. Had COVID not happened, uh, that terrible tragedy of COVID um, and the injection of $39 million, can you just imagine with the type of budget conversations we would have had? But we're about to have them. They're just four years delayed. Um, but meanwhile, I'm, I'm intrigued by these arguments. I'm intrigued by the arguments of trickle-down economics I'm intrigued, especially pe some people who characterize their service here as progressive, uh, where it's if I just give this group this money, it'll somehow matriculate down and help eventually. I, how many times does that have to be debunked? That trickle-down economics doesn't work. If I've literally been here for 30 years and I'm waiting it to fall from the ceiling and hit the ground. When does the trickle actually hit the ground? I've got 30 years of empirical evidence that it doesn't work, right? And um, it, George Bush was wrong about trickle-down economics, and we're still wrong about trickle-down economics. And um, that doesn't work, folks. And if you're lying to yourself, if you think that is going to work, you know, I'll put it back and I'm going to take 1% more of the levy and shift it on to the homeowners and give these businesses a break and they're going to come rolling in here. That isn't going to happen. That isn't going to happen. Why? Because it isn't like you're even in the ballpark to all these competitors, uh, communities. And I would argue, yes. Think about it. Of course you compete against all these other communities about where you want to buy a home, right? People look to buy a home in Holyoke. Well, think about it. If I don't live in Holyoke and I want to live in Western Massachusetts in this area, I mean, who, who am I competing against? I'm going to move to another, like Nebraska? Of course you're competing against Chickabee and West Springfield and Westfield and Northampton and these are where families can go, right? So naturally, it's relevant to say, how do you compare as a cost to a family to live here versus these other communities? That, 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 that argument doesn't make sense. So we have to look at where we are competitively. And believe me, if I thought shifting 1% for my taxes over and you're going to have high street loaded with storefronts and this was all going to happen, that isn't going to happen. We know that isn't going to happen because that's one infinitesimally small component of how a business operates. There's so many other X factors in a business about location and traffic and permitting and the general Massachusetts climate and all those other factors. It's on a whole nother scale, okay? And believe me, it, cannabis and these folks to give these guys a tax to give cannabis companies a tax break to put it on the residents i mean come on really think about that that we should take a down the middle approach we don't want to put any more than we did on the business and we shouldn't be putting any more than we have to on the residents to shift it all in one direction is not fair either way um to to do that so again We've got a lot of questions about pilots and tax breaks. And I mean, it's just all that stuff is going to be the long term solution. It isn't going to be this strategy of we're going to shift all the tax bills onto the residents. Um, that that isn't going to be a long term strategy for success. Now, we we need to get resources from the state 
to inject about $4 million a year on the frickin' billions that they're sitting on down there, okay, to invest in the community that are dealing with the most vulnerable in society. That's where they need to put the resources. And if our state representation leadership is not going to produce those dollars, then we need new local state representative and new state senator leadership. That should be job one. I don't, I don't care about any other thing that they do. Nothing that they will do will have more impact than getting us about $4 million from the beneficence of, of what are people paying all these state income taxes for? They have record coffers of sales tax and state income tax and, and all the excise taxes that are being paid. Who's getting all that money? It's not coming anywhere near over the target that this community needs. Because as I showed you from the levies, our other communities near us, they're generating way more in revenue than we are, and they have nowhere near our expenses or our needs. But yet we're down here like on Survivor Island, and we're all turning spears on each other. That's what, we're, that's, that's what you're dealing with. And this is not, we are not gonna tax the residents of this city out of this problem. So on that note, we move forward. Councilor McGovern, <laughs> uh, typically <coughs> our rules and even parliamentary procedure says the person running the meeting uh, does not enter into debate. Um, I, as I stated earlier, Councilor McGee is running the meeting on his eyes and ears because he is not Motion even... Motion to suspend the rules no, just, no, just in I, case to just allow in case. Councilor McGee <laughs> to speak. I'll second it. Motion may second to suspend the rules to allow Councilor McGee to explain his vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, Todd's not even on a laptop, so he just can't do hybrid and run a meeting. Yeah, no problem. If you, if you, you know, if everybody understands. Um, first of all, property tax is the most unfair thing that is placed on communities in Massachusetts to be able to raise monies to pay for the needed services of residents. Property tax is a scheme that is dictated by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, not chosen by municipals, by by communities. Dictated. It's our only choice. We have some other revenue uh, streams, but they're, they're nothing compared to property tax. We need it to get the money to provide the services that we want to provide. So everything that's been said this evening, there is truth to it. There's, a, there's you know, you, it's not a question of debating or, or contradicting. I'm going to say some things that are going to sound contradictory, but they're only because of where I come from when I make my decision on this, on this vote. It is a very important vote <coughs> every year. Um, we, <clears throat> if I took my house, Jenny and I, and, and, and I want everybody to understand in, in a few months, Jenny and I are going to be on a fixed income, so I understand affordability, trust me. And, but if I take my house and move it to Agwan, my tax rate's going down. My assessed value is going up and my tax bill is going up. And that's, that's the one thing, you know, a little different from what Councilor Jernane said that I believe in and I go by. However, the same thing is true. There are communities where assessed values go up and their tax rates go up too. So there's no rhyme or reason when it comes to property tax. We have to make it fair. So over the years, trying to make it fair, I realize it's impossible to do it completely fair for everybody or to, put, to even please everyone. So I, I've always looked at something that was told, told me in these chambers many years ago at the uh, and the assessors had a public hearing. And we need to look at new construction carefully. New construction, I think, I thought there were two homes built in Hoyoke last year. I think there might have only been one. That's new construction. Their immediate construction cost become the assessed value of that house times whatever the tax rate is. I agree, we need to attract new business. We need to attract commercial property. We need to get healthier because we are we are an industrial city. We're not a bedroom community. We depend upon a healthy relationship and blend of commercial business and residential property. We have some of the most beautiful neighborhoods in the Pioneer Valley. Springfield tries to call themselves the city of, of homes. They're nothing compared to Hoyoke. <clears throat> we have the potential we are land poor, but we have the potential to, to rehab. We have the potential to have some new, new construction, some new commercial construction. 
and to make that part of our community healthy again is very, very, very difficult to do. But because new construction costs, the geriatric authority was torn down, new construction costs, that building alone is going to be assessed at a very high value for the next five to 10 years. And if we want to attract more buildings, you know, the Bay State is a private building, you know, hospital, we need to take and keep in mind a, a rate, a, com a commercial rate that will help us attract. We can argue good gas and electric rates, a great service from a gas and electric company. All the water in the world, reasonable water rates. We can't argue sewer because that's, that just shoots us down and kills us because there is no answer with the federal unfunded mandate to clean up the Connecticut River. I think everybody here wants to clean up the Connecticut River and stop dump, dumping untreated sewage into it, but at the same time, we need federal help and uh, the state you know, needs to step up to the plate on that. <clears throat> so my vote tonight, I don't know exactly what number it was. I won't make any motions tonight because I am up here for Todd. But um, I, I, I really focus on the commercial rate and, and I really would hope that we would come to something that will be able to say, you know, we are cognizant of what that means to promote bringing new business and keeping existing business within the city. And that's, that's my uh, two cents. Uh, is there any other discussion? So you're just gonna state which one we're if, voting? If in? not, the third amendment was by Councilor Bartley. It's the 1.6990. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'll call the roll if you vote yes. You are voting in favor of that SIP. That, that rate would give us an 18, I'm sorry, 1890 residential and a 4042 commercial. If there's no questions, Councillor Gibner. Um, no. Councillor Jordan. Yes. Councillor Maldonado Velez. Um, no. Councillor McGee. Yes. Councillor McGivern, no. Councillor Murphy Rambaletti. No. Councillor Powell. Yes. Councillor Israel Rivera. Okay, at the moment, Councillor Israel Rivera will be marked absent. Councillor Jenny Rivera. No. Councillor Tallman. Yes. Councillor Bacon. Yes. Councillor Anderson Burgos. No. Councillor Bartley. Yes. Six yeses. Six no's. Six no's and one absent. Motion fails. <clears throat> Our second um, amendment was made by Councillor Jernane. It's the 1.7000, which would result in an 1889 residential tax rate and a $40.45 commercial industrial personal property rate. If there's no further discussion, oh, real Mr. quick. Jay? Yeah, just very briefly. This is like pennies one way or the other different. So I would hope the people that voted yes here would stay yes. And I would ask seriously people to reconsider versus option three, which is to load it all on the residents. I just, just hope people would consider that, please. Thank you. If there's no further discussion, Councilor Givner. No. Councilor Jordan. Yes. Councilor Maldonado Velez. No. Councilor McGee. No. Councilor McGivern. No. Councilor Murphy Rambaletti. No. Councilor Paulo. Yes. Councilor Israel Rivera. Still absent. Councilor Jenny Rivera. No. Councilor Tallman. Yes. Councilor Bacon. Yes. Councillor Anderson Burgos. No. Councillor Bartley. Yes. Five, seven, one. <clears throat> the final in this sequence, the final and original motion made by Councillor Givner was 1.6790 which would result in a residential of $19.04, 
commercial industrial personal property of $39.95. Mr. President. Councilor Dre. If this is defeated, then we would have other options potentially. Yeah. Correct. As stated earlier, um, once we, we have three amendments, we do them in order. Once we're completed, if we haven't passed one, we can uh, make three more okay. and then take them in order. Very good. Any further questions or discussion? <laughs> Councilor Gibner. Um, yes. Councilor Jardine. No. Councilor Maldonado Velez. No. Councilor McGee. No. Councilor McGivern, yes. Councilor Murphy Ramaletti. Yes. Councilor Powell. No. Councilor Israel Rivera. Still absent. Councilor Jenny Rivera. Yes. Councilor Tomlin. No. Councilor Bacon. No. Councilor Anderson Burgos. Yes. Councilor Bartley. No. Uh, five yeses, seven noes, one absent. All right. Round two. <laughs> Mr. President. Hey, Councilor Tomlin. Yes, I'd like to uh, call for a um, CIP shift of um, 16940, which would be 1893 and 4030. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to use a 1.6940, <clears throat> which would result residential 1893, commercial. Uh, industrial personal property forty forty dollars and thirty cents. Is there Mr. any Brown. amendments? Mm -hmm. Councilor so Bacon. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to offer a shift of one point six nine six zero. Second. Mr. President. Motion has been made and second for a one point six nine six nine six, six zero. zero. And that would be eighteen ninety two and forty thirty five. Bartley. Uh, Bartley seconded it. 1892-4045, Councilor Anderson Burgos. I'd like to make a shift 1.6820, which is 1901 residential and 4002. Uh, yeah, 4002. Is there a second to that? Second. Motion made and second to use 1.6820 resulting in 1901 residential, 4002 commercial industrial personal property. That's our three. Again, we will be working from the final amendment backwards to the original motion before we can take any additional ones unless one of these passes. Any further discussion? Yep, I think, uh, <coughs> Mr. President, I would just like to again state, I hope we'll take one of the more middle of the road. I mean, that's. I just seconded something I really don't want to vote for, I can honestly tell you. Um, but if that's what it takes to have some ba remotest of skinnest of balance here, I think that's what's fair. Thank you. That's, not, that's not the first one we'll be voting on. Councilor Reagan? Yes, and I would urge my colleagues also that to consider that we really need to share the burden relative to the size of the budget and the issues that we're dealing with. Thank you. There's no further discussion. We'll call the roll. This is for 1.6820, 1901, 4002. Councilor Givner. Um, no. Councilor Jordan. No. Councilor Maldonado Velez. Yes. Councilor McGee. No. Councilor McGivern, yes. Councilor Murphy Rambaletti. Yes. Councilor Powell. No. Councilor Israel Rivera. Councilor Jenny Rivera. Yes. Councilor Tomlin. No. Councilor Bacon. No. Councilor Anderson Burgos. Yes. Councilor Bartley. No. Five yeas, seven noes, one absent. Next vote in order is by Councilor Vacan, the 1.6960, 1901, 
1892 residential, $40.35 commercial industrial personal property. Councilor Givner. Sorry, no. Councilor Jordan. Yes. Councilor Maldonado Velez. No. Councilor McGee. Yes. Councilor McGivern. No. Councilor Murphy Rambaletti. No. Councilor Plowell. Yes. Councilor Israel Rivera. Councilor Jenny Rivera. No. Councilor Tallman. Yes. Councilor Bacon. Yes. Councilor Anderson Burgos. No. Councilor Bartley. Yes. Six yeas. Six noes. One absent. Okay. The final for this round. Uh, it was introduced by Councillor Tallman. 1.6940 residential, 1893 industrial, commercial, personal property, $40.30. Just brief comment. Councillor Dunning. This is for the people that <coughs> like the commercial. This is two more notches towards commercial. So I honestly do not want to vote yes for it. I will, but compromise is anywhere in the room for one vote. Mr. Fis Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dominant. Yeah, I, I think this is a fair one. I, I mean, it's it's sort of the middle. I, I mean, it's it goes up a little bit more than I like for residential, but it, it's sort of in an area where I think we could have some support, where it gives a little bit more to the commercial, but um, it's not really killing the residents. Uh, we do definitely need business in our community, and we do have a lot of people that are struggling. So I think it's important that we try to have a, a fair rate. I think this is one of the most fair rates that we could come up with tonight. Mr. President, Councilor Bartley. Yeah, I'm. 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 I'm going to vote for this. Um, and, and the reason I am is because there's been quite a bit of history. When, I mean, I just voted for the one. My preference was for 1.7, and that was at residential rate of 1889. Uh, this one is 1892. But if it passes prologue, we've quite often seen residential and commercial come down two, three, four cents even from this vote on the CIP shift. So that would put me back where I was originally wanting to be. So I will go for this as a compromise. And I just, if I could, Mr. President, can, can I just finish a thought that I had? Mr. Barley. Okay, I, I, and I do apologize. I, I, don't, I don't think I, I made my, I don't think I was very cogent uh, a few seconds ago. So when I was speaking about a vote for uh, at 115 Whiting Farms Road, my point in saying that was if it does pass the ZBA, which is not a low hurdle, by the way. You're talking about a $1 million investment in a building that's assessed for $300,000. You're talking about new growth. Mr. President, you referenced the um, former geriatric. The reason that's at the commercial rate on, on what is essentially a mental health facility is because of this city council insisted upon it. Furthermore, we, we talk about Mira Vista, the former Providence Hospital, tax at the full commercial rate. That's the new growth we've had, other than a brand new cannabis building on uh, Main Street at Jackson. I don't remember a whole lot of new development as far as uh, commercial development, and, and I'll take your word uh, as to the limited amount of residential property. Although, as Councillor Pueyo and I have talked about, we've been, and Councillor Tallman's on board with this, we've pushed repeatedly for development of the, of the residential property at, at, at St. Vincent and Ingleside to receive nothing from Moped. I mean, this, this would be brand new housing. But, you know, we shake our heads. Mean Councillor Bartley, I know. But you know what, Mr. President? I care about the city uh, very much, and that's why I'm here. And uh, my hope is that we'll get this done tonight. I, I, I don't love this rate, but based upon what Peter suggested and what I, what I reference as this historic precedent, I'm hopeful we can pass it on this one. Thank you. Councilor Reagan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I would note that 
I really do not like this residential rate, but in the spirit of compromise, I will vote yes for this. Thank you. Any further discussion? If none, call the roll. This is on 1.6940, introduced by Councillor Tallman, 1893, $40.30. Councillor Givner? No. Councillor Jordan? Yes. Councillor Maldonado Velez? No. Councillor McGee? Yes. Councillor McGivern? Close, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Murphy Rambaletti. Yeah, the same. No. Yeah, that was fun. Councillor Plowell. Yes. Councillor Israel Rivera. Councillor Jenny Rivera. No. Councillor Tom. Yes. Councillor Bacon. Yes. Councillor Anderson Burgos. I'm with Joe. Close but no. Councillor Bartley. Yes. Got it. All right, I'll make a motion. What do, one, 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 one. That's seven, right? That's seven. Is it? Yeah, it's seven. Yeah. I had seven. One. I, I, two, three, four, five. No, oh, that's six. Oh, no. Six. 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 Oh, six. I thought it was. I thought my count was close. good. <laughs> that's what they were saying, Pete. Close. Pete, oh, close. One <laughs> two right, two right on the edge. One more down or? Councilor Jordan. We're close. <coughs> I'd like to have something that is seconded by Mr. McGivern. One, one, six, I, I, three. You know, because I'm up here, I was trying not to make any Second. motions. I just well, uh, uh, we were close, but no cigar. But I, I would like to go home yeah, at some point. One six nine three. Can we split the difference between forty o two and forty thirty somewhere? All right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, not too much. Uh, <laughs> how about uh, one, one six? One. How about? Second. Three or two? How about two zero? I'll give I you two, two more. You. Two more down. How's that? Two zero. Is there a second to that? Second. All right. One six nine two zero. One six nine two zero would be eighteen ninety four and forty dollars and twenty six cents. Mr. President. Councilor Bartley. One point six nine three zero second. Second, Mr. President. Motion made and seconded for 1.6930. Mr. Mr. President. Four and 4028. Councillor Murphy Ramaletti. Thank you. Um, 1.6850. Is there a second to that? Second. Motion made and seconded. 1.6850, 1899, 40.09. Okay, any further discussion? How about suspend the rules and go to 1692? <laughs> we can't. No, come on. <laughs> I'm only teasing. I can't do that. <laughs> um, Councillor Jardines was seconded by Councillor McGivern. Councillor. <laughs> I second it. Yeah, Pete kept seconded. Councillor Tom. I, I second it, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, you're right into close, you know, but all right, no more fun. But well, we got to get this done. the rules, Joe. You can talk. We do have to get this done. I mean, we're, I mean, you know, we're, none of us are going to be happy when we walk out of this, happy, happy when we walk out of this room. We, we've done seven, but eight rounds. We're, we're trying to do our best, this and I think we time. need to come as close as we can to a, to a middle ground. So, with that in mind, if there's no further discussion. Mr. Mr. Uh, President. Councilor Talman. I had a question, a clarification. On these, um, these rates, I think we mentioned the one uh, 69660 or, and 6950. It seems like the residential is the same number, but the, the commercial is like two cents. Everything on the commercial side is two cents different. So does that, is that an error or is that something that's supposed to be that way? It just doesn't seem... In a couple of places, it's probably rounding. Round it's round it. rounding. Yeah. Rounded up? Okay. Yeah, there. I don't have anyone here to def to uh, defer that question to, but I I think it's and we, you could even make this scale even tight. Yeah. You know, more broad in in terms of uh, options. You can, you can do any type of uh, decimal point and and put it in there. This is one of the bigger scales I've seen in many years from the. Uh, from the assessors, you know, right. we, we're we're in a much more condensed. Eight fifty. 
No, actually, I think 6850 will be first because she made that last. Gotcha. Um, our, so. our, uh, a pray, uh, that, our, Assessor. I call her assessor, assessor. because assessor. what happened was wrong. But Cheryl did tell uh, Jeff that they went by uh, tenths this year. Tenths, okay. And not, uh, not by a quarter. So that, I think that answers the question and what Councilor Jardine says, just round it more or less. I appreciate that. Thank you. When, when you look at the rate. Um, all right, so <clears throat> last one. First, Murphy Rambaletti. 16850-1899-4009. Givner. Yes. Councilor Jordan. No. Councilor Maldonado Velez. Yes. Councilor McGee. No. Councilor McGivern. Yes. Councilor Murphy Rambaletti. Yes. Councilor Powell. No. Councilor Israel Rivera. Councilor Jenny Rivera. Yes. Councilor Tallman. No. Councilor Bacon. No. Councilor Anderson Burgos. Yes. Councilor Bartley. No. Six A's, seven no's, and one absent. The second amendment. Sixty-nine uh, thirty, I think it yes. was. Yes. Yep. My eyes are starting to do tricks here. And it was the one, Jordan, J Jordan compromise with McGivern mm -hmm. after that one. That's the one close, right? No pressure, Joe. What, no pressure. What, I don't feel any pressure. <laughs> I'm at peace. <laughs> one point six nine three zero eighteen ninety four residential forty twenty eight. And I think this one was uh, motioned by uh, Councilor Tomlin, correct? No. No, Bartley. 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 I didn't write it down. Sorry. Doesn't matter. <clears throat> uh, Councilor Gibner. No. Councilor Jordan? Yes. Councilor Maldonado Velez? No. Councilor McGee? Yes. Councilor McGivern, no. Councilor Murphy Rambaletti, no. Councilor Powell, yes. Councilor Israel Rivera, Councilor Jenny Rivera, no. Councilor Tomlin, yes. Councilor Vega, yes. Councilor Anderson Burgos, no. Councilor Bartley, yes. 671. Six, six. Six, six, one. Yep. Sorry, six. sorry. Okay. Another <coughs> final. One six nine two. Another notch towards commercial, Joe. One six nine two zero. Eighteen ninety four. Residential forty twenty. Forty twenty six. Commercial industrial personal property. Any further discussion? If not, Councilor Gibner. No. Councilor Jordan. Yes. Councilor Maldonado Velez. No. Councilor McGee. Yes. Councilor McGivern. Yes. Councilor Murphy Rambaletti. Yes. Councilor Powell. Yes. Councilor Israel Rivera. Councilor Jenny Rivera. Yes. Councilor Tomlin. Yes. Councilor Vacant. Yes. Councilor Anderson Burgos. Yes. Councilor Bartley. Yes. Well, we have to go home. Ten yeas. Congrats, everyone. Oh, do we have to sign something? Yeah. Uh, we do not have to sign anything this year, according to uh, uh, Debbie. Um, it's, it's on the state level, it changed. Uh, so there's nothing to sign. Motion she to adjourn. Take this vote and give it to the state for certification. It's a moral. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, we, we got there, most important. Again, property tax is not fair, but it's, it's a necessary evil to the state can wake up and on the motion in different ways yes. motion to adjourn all those Second. in favor Aye. Aye. opposed Aye. thank you thank you Good night.